On March 26, 2019, at the 5th Annual National Space Council meeting held in Huntsville, Alabama, Vice President of the United States Mike Pence issued a mandate to NASA to accelerate its lunar mission and put boots on the moon by 2024. The new 2024 update requires a drastic revision to NASA's previous schedule. In fact, it has left many in the industry and even within the wider public speculating if this new goal is even possible given NASA's current budget and the exceptionally tight timeframes. If you recall, in February of this year, NASA had previously unveiled plans for a series of lunar missions that would progress through the 2020s, ultimately culminating in a manned mission to the moon in 2028. In the February broad agency announcement, NASA had extended an invitation to private companies to propose designs for three essential phases of the mission related to its human landing system, namely the descent phase, the transfer vehicle, and refueling elements. In addition to these three phases though, and as you can probably tell from the image on the screen, NASA still has a few critical components that the agency itself needs to take care of, mainly SLS and Orion. If NASA is going to land humans on the moon by 2024, according to this specific reference architecture, then it needs SLS and Orion. There's only one small problem here. SLS isn't exactly ready. Challenges for SLS. NASA's initial goal with SLS was to have a rocket that could take humans to the moon and Mars. Boeing is the prime contractor on SLS and currently oversees the overall development of the vehicle. Boeing is also responsible for the production of the launch vehicle's critical core stages. To give a bit of a reminder and some contacts here, this contract was awarded to Boeing in 2012. Other aerospace giants are responsible for other subsystems of SLS. Northrop Grumman, SRBs, Lockheed Martin, Orion, and Aerojet engines. NASA has struggled with the completion of SLS in recent history. The debut flight of SLS, EM-1, or Exploration Mission 1, an uncrewed flight of NASA's Orion capsule around the moon, was initially scheduled for December 2017. Due to continuous production delays and cost overruns, the initial December 2017 launch date was pushed back to June of 2020. The core stages are still undergoing significant development. It's worth noting that as time progresses, NASA's expenditure on SLS is also growing, and rapidly. NASA has already spent $11.9 billion on the development of SLS and is expected to spend at least $8.9 billion more through 2021 when the contract ends. Launching Orion without SLS, commercial alternatives. On March 13, 2019, at a hearing of the Senate Commerce Committee in Washington, before the VP's official call to put boots on the moon by 2024, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine further highlighted the struggle with SLS, stating, We're now understanding better how difficult this project is, and that it's going to take some additional time. Despite the fact that SLS will likely not be ready for EM-1, Bridenstine confirmed NASA's commitment to a 2020 EM-1 mission, stating that we as an agency need to stick to our commitments. It was at this point in the hearing where Bridenstine stated that NASA would explore the use of commercial launch vehicles in order to achieve its mission objectives, specifically for now, the objectives of EM-1. And Bridenstine's right. In light of the current White House administration's call for a manned moon landing in 2024, and given the current pace of development of SLS, commercial launch vehicles definitely have to play an important role. If there's going to be a moon landing in 2024, it requires significant testing to ensure safety, as well as uncrewed flights to and around the moon that need to happen as soon as possible. A new approach, looking at commercial alternatives. NASA's decision to launch Orion on a vehicle other than SLS isn't impossible. NASA has already done this. In December 2014, NASA conducted its Exploration Flight Test 1, or EFT-1, a two-orbit test of its Orion crew vehicle launched from ULA's Delta IV Heavy. NASA's decision to launch Orion, the European Space Module, and ICPS, which are all needed to meet the requirements of EM-1 on a trip around the moon, though, is another story. On April 1, 2019, Bridenstine aligned all the options NASA had considered within the period since his committee hearing meeting in March 2019, and since the VP's announcement, a period of just over two weeks. NASA considered a number of options for an alternative vehicle. A lot of them sound pretty cool, and as Bridenstine stated, would make pretty cool visuals, but they don't work. One of the compelling non-workable solutions, though, was the use of two Delta IV heavies. In this case, one Delta IV heavy is needed to transport Orion and the European Service Module, and the other Delta IV heavy is needed to transport the ICPS. There are a number of problems with this approach, and it is incredibly complicated. These two Delta IV heavies would need to be launched almost at the same time. 
The problem with this though is that there's only one Delta IV Heavy launch pad on each coast of the United States, one at Cape Canaveral and the other at Vandenberg Air Force Base. To further complicate this, a launch from the west coast puts you into a polar orbit. In order to achieve rendezvous, there's going to have to be an orbital change. This is complicated. That takes a ton of Delta V and it takes a ton of time. That's the big problem is the time. Because if, if, and I don't want to say what that time is, but it's enough time to where you're going to have cryogenic boil off and then you're not going to be able to accomplish the objective anyway. So two Delta IVs proved to be unworkable. Falcon Heavy, ESM, Orion, and ICPS. As mentioned previously, there were a lot more options NASA considered, but again, they don't work. The only feasible alternative NASA was able to come up with to meet the mission requirements involved the use of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. This approach is a combination of the Falcon Heavy core sections and second stage and the ICPS with the European Space Module and Orion. This approach works, and it's possible, but it's probably a little bit controversial. SpaceX and ULA are competitors. There has been fierce rivalry between the two companies over the years. In Bridenstine's own words, Talk about strange bedfellows. Of course, the actual modifications needed to be made in order to pull off the launch of this new hybrid vehicle won't be easy. It isn't a perfect solution by any means. At the end of the day, SLS is still the best solution NASA has. SLS was designed for this mission. But wait, why doesn't NASA just use Starship? Well, just to be clear, Starship is in the same position right now as SLS. What I mean by that is that the solution isn't exactly ready. It's still under development and in a very early stage of development. NASA is looking at vehicles that have a proven track record and demonstrated flight history. Don't get me wrong, Starship is slated to be an extremely capable vehicle that is estimated to achieve a mission to the moon at a fraction of the cost, and there won't be need for gateways or landers or any of those things that make things increasingly complex. But for now, NASA is sticking to its plan. NASA has a lot of work to do if there's going to be a 2024 manned moon landing. That's just five years away. With the continual delay of SLS and with the rising cost projections, the agency is right to consider possible commercial alternatives. There's a lot of work that needs to be done still. Looking at the reference architecture, you can see NASA still has to complete a lot of parts. The Gateway, the Human Landing System, and SLS, just to name a few. Public-private partnership is perhaps the best approach to achieve a manned lunar landing in the coming years. Despite all this though, NASA still tends to get tossed around in a game of political football. It will definitely be interesting to see how the agency moves farther in the coming years and how the mission develops over time. NASA is expecting an amendment to its 2020 budget in the coming days that might give us some more clues as to how this new 2024 goal will take shape. A 2024 manned mission to the moon is likely to quickly catalyze a mission to Mars in the 2030s.